Hello and welcome back to Side High Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you three different experiments with using a BC547 transistor, such as taking an LED and changing its blink rate by the changing of voltage. Also, taking a potentiometer to change the blink rate of the LED due to resistance, and taking a speaker to hear the signal of the transistor. Let's get started. <laughs> you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need is an LED, a 1K ohm resistor, a BC547 transistor, a 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, some jumper wires, and a breadboard. And this right here is a schematic to be able to create this circuit. Now let's go ahead and assemble this project and let's get started. First, I'm going to go and take the BC547 transistor and put it into the breadboard. This pin right here is the collector. This pin here is the base. And this pin here is the emitter. Next, I'm going to take this 1K ohm resistor and connect one lead over to the emitter and the other lead free. Next, I'm going to take this LED. This pin here is the anode. This pin here is the cathode. And I want to connect the anode over to the collector of the transistor. I want to connect the cathode over to the negative rail. There we go. Next, I'm going to take this 220 microfarad electrolytic capacitor where this pin is negative and it connects to the negative rail. This pin's positive and it connects to the positive rail. And I want to connect it just like this. Next, I'm going to take this positive jumper wire and connect it to the positive rail, and then take the other end of the positive jumper cable and connect that to the emitter. Next, connect another positive jumper wire to the 1K ohm resistor, and the other end of that positive wire will connect to the positive input voltage. Next, I'm going to take this negative jumper wire and connect that to the negative rail, which will connect to the common ground. And there you go, the circuit is now complete, and it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to connect the positive wire from the lab bench power supply to the input voltage, and then connect the negative from the lab bench power supply to the common ground. And there we go, the circuit is now complete. As you can see, it takes up to 13.5 volts for the LED to flash. Try to go a little lower, and it doesn't flash at 13.3 or 4. 13.5 it, it flashes. Now watch as I crank it up more, the LED will flash faster. Flash, continuing to flash, continuing to flash, and as you can see, it's almost on a solid bright light. And it seems like it stops at about 22.6 volts, and of course I can crank it all the way to 28 and stays on still. So yeah, that's how this circuit works. Some of you may see connecting it to a 9 volt battery is not true. Some of you may see connecting to 12 volts not really true. Possibly I need to change the resistance but pos or the capacitance, but for not, from what I've noticed uh, using this kind of capacitance and this kind of resistance seems to work the best for this kind of circuit. You could possibly change the two types of uh, components to be able to lower the voltage, but from this, from what I, I've made a bunch of tests before and I can see that this works the best. Okay, so now let's go ahead and test out the circuit with using a 9 volt battery. Now of course connecting it to 9 volts isn't going to be enough power to power this. As you can see, it doesn't work. And connect the negative. 
negative over to negative. As you can see, it works. Connect to negative. And I'm going to go ahead and turn up the voltage, going all the way up to maximum voltage. And what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and take connect the positive to main, to the main voltage. I want to connect that to the center pin, although it doesn't really matter which pin as long as you have the two two on this side or two on this side. Connect to the center pin. And connect it directly to the LED, uh, to the uh, resistor. And now I can control the voltage. It's very, very sensitive. So it just takes very small turns, but it still flashes. Just like that. And now one more added bonus. I want to see what happens if I attach a speaker to the circuit. I'm going to go ahead and take the negative, connect to negative. I'm going to take the positive, connect the positive. Interesting, so it makes clicks. When it's on turned all the way to maximum, it makes no sound. But as I turn it the opposite direction to make the LED flash, it should start ticking. very slowly. Hmm. What if I add the LED to the circuit as well? Oh yeah? Now let's see what happens. Oh, nothing with the LED. Interesting. Okay. Okay, so there you have it. Now you know what that sounds like through a speaker. So now seeing the LED flash the way it's flashing, and you hear the clicking, it's not acting like what you can hear from the 555 timer by making the square waves. If I'm correct, I'm assuming that this is making sawtooth wave signal. I'm not really sure. Thank you for watching my experiment with using a BC547 transistor, watching how you can change the blink rate with an LED by changing the voltage, changing the resistance with using a potentiometer, and hearing the clicking sounds with using a speaker. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTi Tech. I hope you learned something new, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTi Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.